Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Paul Vogel, Spotify's Chief Financial Officer. Today you've heard about the reasons for our successful growth since our direct listing, and hopefully you've also gotten a better feel for the significant opportunities that lie ahead. I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes on how that growth has impacted our KPIs and financial model, walking through updates to the various metrics, and showing how everything you've heard today sets us up for strong and profitable growth. But first, I want to remind you of what we've achieved since our direct listing. As you've heard, when we went public, we were a music streaming company. And it wasn't immediately clear how the landscape would evolve or which companies would emerge as winners. Since then, we've expanded beyond music to become the leading player in audio with over 400 million monthly active users, roughly two and a half times compared with just four years ago. Our subscribers have grown at a similar rate, topping 180 million. That growth has been consistent since going public, we have met or exceeded our guidance ranges for both users and subscribers over 90% of the time. And while our growth has been very strong, some years we lean more on user side and other years we see more strength in subscribers. That is the beauty of our freemium model. The two parts work hand in hand to deliver long-term growth for both. The consistency of our performance is a testament to the foundation of the strategy we laid out to you four years ago. Ubiquity, personalization, and freemium. This continues to differentiate our positioning in the market. This foundation has also been a key driver of the steady improvements we've seen in retention and churn. Two key factors in our user and subscriber growth. First, looking at premium churn specifically, we've seen the trend line move consistently lower from 5.5% at the end of 2017 to 3.9% at the end of 2021. And breaking it down further, in our developed markets, we've seen strong reductions in churn, declining to 2.4%, with churn as low as 1% to 2% in our most mature markets. We view this as a positive indicator for the rest of our subscription portfolio. In our developing markets, churn tends to be higher initially, creating headwinds to overall premium churn. But as these markets mature, they've shown strong continual declines. In fact, after year three, gross monthly churn has historically reached the same point on the churn curve as developed markets. And looking at ad-supported users, we have seen retention improve over 650 basis points from 2017 to 2021. This is a testament to our ongoing investment in the free user experience, helping to drive user engagement, retention, and conversion. So next, I'd like to spend a few minutes translating our user and subscriber growth into P&L metrics. So revenue has grown in line with our user growth and our gross profit has grown even faster, more than tripling over the last four years. And if you exclude the impact of foreign exchange rates, our performance has been even stronger. On a constant currency basis, revenue grew at a compound annual growth rate of 26% and gross profit at a compound annual growth rate of 35% during the same time frame. Now moving further down our P&L, operating expenses have grown at a compound annual growth rate of 19% since 2017. And if you exclude the impact of social charges, our rate of expense growth has been decelerating since 2019. In 2021, you'll see our revenue growth outstripping operating expense growth. And importantly, although we have incurred losses during this time, we have generated positive operating cash flow in each year including more than one billion in cumulative free cash flow, even while investing into new areas like podcasting. This is a diff key differentiator of our business and a dynamic you don't see in most direct-to-consumer entertainment companies. We have a strong balance sheet and strong free cash flow. This has enabled us to finance more than 900 million in M&A, while also returning more than 600 million in capital to date over the past four years. <laughs> In light of our strong free cash flow, we've been reinvesting aggressively into our business. And you may be wondering how we decide where to invest and how much capital we should commit. As you heard earlier, we are leaning into LTV as a tool to inform key business decisions, and it's helping us achieve better outcomes from marketing to product to content, even M&A. Tony highlighted the positive LTV results we're seeing from podcasting, 
and they also extend to numerous other investments we've made. Take Lyrics, for example. Currently, there's not a lot of revenue associated with this feature. It's mostly an incremental expense. However, since launching globally in November, it has quickly become one of our most used features. So, while the addition of Lyrics carries a short-term gross margin impact, we've seen an uptick in user retention across a meaningful portion of our user base. And this points to a positive LTV benefit. When we decided to grow our advertising business outside the US, we had a clearly defined model for the revenue uplift and the cost associated to achieve our goals. And in the short term, this cost hits our operating expenses before we see the revenue uplift. However, we see this investment, mostly in headcount, as driving LTV improvements. And on a more traditional financial return basis, we expect to generate a strong double-digit ROI from this investment over the next three years. So turning to our financial performance, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about our music business. Our music business has been a real source of strength, driving strong revenue growth and strong gross margin expansion. And this may not be immediately evident in our consolidated results. But make no mistake, we have delivered against the expectations and framework we rolled out at the time of our direct listing. So, isolating just the performance of our music operations, you'd see that our music revenues, which consists of premium subscriptions, ad-supported music, our marketplace suite of artist tools, and strategic licensing, grew at a 24% compound annual growth rate and in line with our expectations on an FX neutral basis. And importantly, our music gross margins have increased over the same time frame, reaching 28.3% in 2021. This is approximately 150 basis points higher than our total 2021 consolidated margin of 26.8%. And when you back out the negative impact of currency movements since 2017, the music margin looks even more favorable at 28.5%. And look at our progression another way. Since 2018, the last year before our major podcast investment, our music margins have expanded on average by approximately 75 basis points per year. At our last investor day, we told you to expect gross margins in the 30 to 35% range over the long term. And this was and still remains the goal for our music operations. As you can see from these numbers, we are clearly on our way. So let me unpack how we've expanded our music gross margins. At the beginning of 2018, we announced the development of our marketplace business, all of the tools and services that Charlie described earlier. Our thesis back then was that by providing increased value to artists, creators, and labels, they would see material benefit, and so would Spotify. And that is exactly what we are seeing today. We've long maintained that our success is not solely tied to renegotiating new headline rates. It's about our ability to innovate right along with our partners to grow a business that benefits both artists and Spotify, and that's what we've done with Marketplace. In 2018, our Marketplace contribution to gross profit was only 20 million. In 2021, it grew to more than 160 million, eight times the size in just four years. We expect that number to increase another 30% or more in 2022. We see tremendous upside in Marketplace and anticipate that its financial contribution will continue to grow at a healthy double-digit rate in the years ahead. Marketplace is the quintessential example of our approach to capital allocation. There was a significant upfront cost to build and launch these offerings. But we saw compelling data, which gave us the confidence to double down and invest aggressively against our goals. And it may have taken time to build up momentum, but our patience and conviction has paid off and we're seeing material benefit from our investment. So next, I'd like to spend a bit of time unpacking podcasting. Our investment in podcasting have fueled both user and revenue growth, but they've also created a temporary drag on gross margin expansion. So taking a step back, one of the dynamics we mentioned early on was if, that if we were seeing success with our investments in growth initiatives, we would double down. And that is exactly what has occurred in our podcasting business. We continue to invest in this vertical because we believe the long-term margin profile will be accretive to our consolidated margins. So let me, show, let me show you some of the positive signs we're seeing thus far. As Don and Tony said, we see that users who engage with both music 
and podcasts have a higher LTV than those who engage with just music. So part one, we see the benefits to user retention and churn, and this translates into a clear benefit to LTV. This higher LTV that the investment strategy is working. And the second part of the equation is the impact on our financial model. In 2021, podcasting revenue grew more than 300% year on year to nearly 200 million. However, this growth came with a 103 million negative impact on gross profit. And in 2022, that impact will be higher, consistent with the gross margin outlook we communicated to you on our Q1 earnings call. But this drag will not last. Based on our current forecast, we believe 2022 will be the peak in terms of the negative impact on gross margin, with podcast gross margin turning profitable over the next one to two years, with meaningful ramp from that point onward. Additionally, our podcast investment should become accretive to consolidated gross margins, i.e. higher than our music gross margins within the three to five year time frame. We are building a massive podcast audience, which is the foundation for monetizing our investments. As of Q1, 30% of our monthly active users engage with podcast content globally, and podcast consumption accounts for more than 7% of all listening hours on our platform. And we see substantial headroom for both of these metrics to move meaningfully higher. So over the next three to five years, podcast listening hours are poised to grow materially on our platform, and we're just getting started in terms of monetizing these listening hours. Only a minority of podcast time spent was monetized by us in 2021 either through our O&E inventory or monetizable span impressions. In fact, of the 7% of listening hours coming from podcasts, approximately 14% are currently monetized by us on a global basis. As Dawn laid out earlier, we are hard at work expanding our capabilities here. Now, moving forward, I will walk through the high-level expectations for our financial results in the intermediate and longer term. And to be clear, for us, the intermediate term reflects the next three to five years with longer term implying the next decade. Our goal continues to be to deliver 20% plus revenue growth over the long term. And when looking at how we will achieve this target, there are a number of factors that should con contribute to growth. First, we see continued subscriber growth over the next three to five years, and that growth will be aided by new product SKUs and ARPU initiatives. And additionally, we see significant growth ahead for our advertising business, thanks to a combination of our investments in new product offerings, further penetration on and off Spotify, and growth in both developed and developing markets. All of these factors give us confidence that our advertising business has strong upside. And finally, as we've mentioned throughout the day, we see new verticals as further additive to revenue growth. Now let's look at gross margin. As we showed earlier, our gross margin, led by our marketplace tools and services, has grown nicely, hitting 28.3% in 2021. And moving forward, we see continued expansion of our marketplace offerings. And that, along with other, other favorable margin drivers, such as improving international ads monetization, should lead to further expansion of our music margin, first to 30%, and then over time to 35%. And with regards to podcasting, we see podcast gross margins expanding over time for two main reasons. First, we see leverage on the fixed cost content from our O&E business, and second, we see span continuing, continuing to grow, and with it, a strong gross margin based on the current take rates of the product. And podcasting has two benefits. First, it will see a significant reversal from a margin detractor to a margin enhancer. And second, as it grows to become a larger percentage of our business, the mix shift will further benefit our consolidated gross margin. Over the next three to five years, we believe podcast margins should top 30%, and our long-term view is that this business could reach 40 to 50%. And as Alex dis discussed, we plan to launch three new verticals over the next 10 years, with audiobooks being first on the agenda. We see many of our newer incremental verticals as having even better gross margins than our current portfolio. So summing up our gross margins, we see music margins at roughly 30% or above in the intermediate term. We also see a podcast business that will flip from a drag to a benefit also topping 30% with upside from there. And based on the current visibility we have on these businesses and other initiatives, we expect our consolidated gross margin to top 30% during this time frame. And over the long term, our roadmap has a number of initiatives that we believe will yield even higher incremental mar margins. 
we are building a strong business with significantly higher gross margins. And we won't hesitate to invest when we see something big to grow our business. And this may cause or create some lumpiness in our margin progression. And as you've seen it, our growth is not always linear. 2022 is a great example of this. But hopefully, you now see why we are so excited about the long-term financial model we are building. So what does all this mean for where we're headed with profitability and cash flow? So let's start with operating expenses. As we hit the middle of 2021, we, we identified a number of initiatives that we wanted to pursue more aggressively. This was mainly headcount in R&D, as well as a step up in marketing. The increase in headcount began toward the end of last year and continued into the first part of this year. And on the marketing side, we identified a number of markets where we believe we could accelerate our growth to gain meaningful share. With that being said, we are clearly aware of the increasing uncertainty regarding the global economy. And while we have yet to see any material impact to our business, we are keeping a close eye on the situation and evaluating our headcount growth in the near term. And when it comes to marketing, the situation will be a bit more fluid. Our longstanding use of LTV to SAC will remain a guiding factor in how and how much we spend moving forward. Historically, we have maintained an LTV to SAC of between two and a half and three times. And our aggressive approach to 2022 was potentially going to cross the lower bound of that range this year. But given the current environment, we will be evaluating our level of marketing spend moving forward. So that's the short term. But before getting into the long term expectations, let me walk you through how we think about our operating expense growth. We will invest as much as possible when we see potential to increase LTV. That could be in new users, retention drivers, ARPU opportunities, or activities that increase our gross margin everything you heard us mention before. And secondly, we are focused on a consolidated level on growing gross profit faster than the rate of revenue growth. And lastly, we're focused on remaining free cash flow positive. This is an important metric because it essentially helps you think about how we modulate our investments. With that in mind, looking out over the intermediate to longer term, our expectations for OPEX have moderated slightly since our first, invest first investor day. We now see R&D around 10 to 13%, staying at our current levels or even potentially increasing, but below our prior long-term guidance. Sales and marketing of roughly 6 to 7%, and G&A at 3% or below. So if we achieve our gross margin goals, we would expect an operating margin of roughly 10%, with the potential for operating margin to scale up significantly as gross margin improves further. As I discussed earlier, we've been free cash flow positive for each of the past four years and expect that to, to continue moving forward. 2022 will be one of our smaller free cash flow years, given the already mentioned investments, but we expect it to be positive. And addressing another question we often get, much of our free cash flow does come from a favorable working capital mix. We think this is an advantage of the way the music streaming market operates, and we expect that dynamic to remain for the foreseeable future. But regardless, we expect more of our free cash flow to increasingly come from growth in operating income, much like we saw in 2021. And we view our free cash flow trend over the next five years as remaining positive and strong. And we expect to generate billions of cash flow over this time frame. We believe the positive and growing free cash flow in our business is somewhat unique in direct to consumer companies. This is a core advantage of our model moving forward. So in conclusion, we're excited about the business we are building at Spotify. We have strong momentum with, the, with potential for meaningful user, revenue, and bottom line growth in both the short term and long term. In coming into this investor day, our goal was to detail how we are able, we able to marry our industry leading product with a strong and growing financial profile. And hopefully you leave today more convinced that we have the team and the plan to deliver growth in users, subscribers, revenue, and margin, and doing so with positive and growing free cash flow. We have never been more enthusiastic about the opportunity ahead. 